there is such a thing as mushroom slicer. Hello, another unusual wine for you today. Yesterday I went to the shop and bought myself some mushrooms. And I'm sure you need to make wine out of them. Couldn't find any recipes anywhere, but I know it's popular in the South Asian countries. But I can't find a recipe. So I thought I'd give it a go, see if I make some mushroom wine. So first up, your mushroom. I'm using standard button mushrooms, but I'm sure you can use any type. Whatever you grow, or whatever you can buy. I'm sure each type would give you a different flavour wine. So explore and experiment. I'm going to be using one kilo of mushrooms to make one gallon of wine. So I'm going to start chopping these mushrooms and see how it goes. You want to slice your mushrooms into bite-sized chunks. Nice slices and work your way through the entire kilo. You might want to offer the camera crew a quick taste. Thank you. You can buy specialist mushroom slices if you like, or you can do it the old fashioned way and use a knife. Whilst you're chopping your mushrooms, you want to turn the gas on or electric and heat up your frying pan. Those brave people who have tried to drink mushroom wine before say it tastes just like a grape chardonnay they do. I wonder if that's true. It's a reason to find out, isn't it? Hey, I don't know what it's like, but we'll find out. If it makes a grape chardonnay, that'd be awesome. Once your pan's all hot and your mushrooms are chopped, shove your mushrooms into the pan. It's at this stage that if you back out of making the mushroom wine, you can make yourself a nice omelette. You want to keep on stirring your mushrooms around and around the pan so they don't burn. You haven't added any oil because you don't really want an oily wine. Now that wouldn't be nice. If you find your mushrooms are sticking to the base of the pan, you would add a tiny bit of home-brewed wine to the pan, just to make them a bit more non-stick. You need to keep on stirring your mushrooms until they release all of the juice and turn a lovely golden brown colour. These mushrooms make me fancy a fry-up. Sausage, egg, bacon, streaky bacon I think. An all-day breakfast wine. Now that sounds really interesting. Whilst you're frying up your onions, you want to put the kettle on and make yourself a cup of tea. And whilst you're making yourself a cuppa, make one for your wine. An extra strong, normal tea, no milk, no sugar. You're going to add this to your wine to add lots of tannins to your wine. Awesome. Keep on stirring, keep on frying until they all grow lovely brown, soft and squidgy mushroom fungus like. Whilst your mushrooms are sizzling and simmering away, you can prepare the sugar. For this recipe, I'm using some Demerara sugar. I think the nuttiness and fruitiness of Demerara would really enhance the mushroom flavour. I'm using one kilo of Demerara sugar. So shove it into your fermenting bucket. And then add your aforementioned mug of tea. Tea bag and all. And now, this is where the recipe gets really interesting. I'm going to be using some Marmite as a yeast nutrient. Marmite is full of B vitamins, B3 and so on, that really helps the yeast start working. It helps build up the flavour as well. You may not like Marmite, but you can't really taste it in the wine. It adds a wee little bit of something, but you can't quite tell it's Marmite. So if you love it or you hate it, you can use it. Or, if you aren't sure about Marmite and you don't want to be too brave, just use some normal yeast nutrient. But then, if you aren't being brave, why are you making mushroom wine? So you want to add a big teaspoon, tablespoon of Marmite into your bucket with your sugar and your tea. I love Marmite. Marmite. It's far better than that Australian Vegemite stuff. Next up, you want to add your boiling water and your mushrooms. Otherwise, it would be a Marmite wine, which might actually work. 
I'll do that. Stay tuned. Good idea. Well done. Make sure you get all of that juice that's leaked out of the mushrooms. It's all flavour, it's all nutritious, it's all tasty. Be sure to stir your sugar and your water and your mushrooms and your marmite and your cup of tea to dissolve all of the sugar. So once it's all well stirred and the water's up to one gallon mark, you want to let it cool for a, a while until it comes down to room temperature. Because it's an experiment, I'm going to take a hydrometer reading just so I can work out where the wine is going alcohol-wise. I've just taken a hydrometer reading of my mushroom wine. My recipe wasn't quite right, it wasn't. The hydrometer reading was a bit too low, so I'm going to have to add more sugar. I think that adding an extra 400 grams of sugar will really boost the starting gravity up to about 1.09, which is where I want it ideally. So, I've measured out the sugar, and add it in, give it a good stir, and hopefully, it will be spot on. The full recipe, including any deviations, alterations, additions, is down in the description below. Also, give us a like and subscribe. I have a few more ideas for bizarre, unusual wines. It's time to add your yeast. The marmite in there should give the yeast a right party. So I'm going to add a teaspoon per gallon of your yeast. Like so. Now, in a bit of good stir, and cover it, and leave it for three days, stirring every day. So in three days time, you want to strain out the mushrooms and put them onto your compost. It makes a brilliant compost it does. Then, transfer the liquid into a demijohn, fit your airlock and allow it to bubble away and ferment until, it's, until it has finished bubbling. And then, hopefully, I'll be able to update at that stage. So, I will see you all again soon for another weird and wonderful wine.